Starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, What's New in iGraphics Origins? My colleague Stefan Hessenbruch, Bruch, oh, <laughs> it's difficult in English. My colleague Stefan Hessenbruch is with me. He's Manager Professional Services at iGraphics and will present you today our new web-based iGraphics platform and will demonstrate the newest features. Today's session, of course, is being recorded and you will receive links to the, web, to the video afterwards. And um, you are all switched to mute, so should you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please write them in the chat window and Stefan will try to answer them right after the webinar or offline later on. So uh, we don't want to lose too much time right now, so Stefan, let's start. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, yes, uh, welcome from my side too. I would like to introduce you today in uh, what's new in iGraphics Origins. For us, it's a uh, very exciting moment because uh, we have so many features and in fact the complete technology that is underlying the iGraphics platform um, has changed. So iGraphics Process Central, as some of you might know from the earlier days, is uh, gone and also the two-tiered architecture is gone. We have a so-called three-tiered architecture now which brings a lot of the stuff you had to do on the database itself, it brings it to the web um, platform so that the administration of the tool, um, yeah, you can do that uh, with your business people and you don't have to ask for a new user from uh, IT uh, people. So. Uh, the platform is now based on um, a Java application server, uh, that's for the server side. Uh, the client side is just a browser or a well-known iGraphics uh, client application. Now, let's have a look on uh, the new things uh, that we have in here. Um, Enterprise-wide accessibility is... Uh, yeah, the web-based uh, point of entry for a uh, user uh, that can do everything from reading the information that you need to know from your process management system, uh, but also for uh, modeling it in there. So that's the next point, enhanced business modeling. We can do it from the web client now, create new objects, create relationships between things, uh, running uh, everything that is needed to create a full-blown process landscape with all its site information. Powerful decision support, we're talking here about uh, reports that can be generated directly from the web client. So. Uh, a lot of uh, reports that were in earlier days only possible with iGraphics Enterprise Modeler and you had uh, to have an installation of it. Uh, it came into the web client so we can do powerful analysis, um, create reports directly in the web interface. Performance visualization is another uh, important thing. Uh, you might know uh, the iGraphics Performance Central product from the earlier days. Um, this product was able to access real-time data from uh, uh, any data source uh, that might be in an external system and was able to clean up the data and show it um, in a web page so that the top level management had all the performance uh, data available they needed to make their important decisions. Now all that possibility came into the web too. Um, it was earlier also in the web, so what's new? Well, um, we can put uh, an indicator on any other object. So it's no longer just um, connected in the strategies area 
uh, you can place a performance indicator on a process, on an activity, on the product, whatever you want. And uh, the technology that we used for our former process, um, excuse me, iGraphics Performance Central, uh, is the today technology that we use for iGraphics Origins. So iGraphics Origins is not just developed for one year. Uh, the Performance Central tool is already here for, I think, five or six years. And since then, the development of the uh, platform was going forward and uh, we brought all the functionality that we had in Process Central and Enterprise Model and other tools into iGraphics Origins on an already known and stable platform. Yeah, improved change management features reinforcing the model consistency. I will talk about that point a little later. And a flexible and scalable solution. What does it mean? Um, flexible, we have been flexible before. Uh, the only problem was uh, if you wanted to take part on modeling, you needed to install a client. So we are way more flexible now. You just can. Uh, start your browser, go to uh, the web page of iGraphics Origins and start modeling. So that's very flexible and uh, scalable. Uh, that means that the system can um, handle any kind of data load, no matter if we are talking about a company with just 10 employees or if we talk about a company that has 10,000 of employees or hundred thousands. The system can handle any kind of uh, data easily. All the design of the platform was done always in mind to be as powerful as possible in any um, situation of, uh, of uh, users, what they do, how many they are. Uh, we want that the system is always very responsive. And I think we did a very good job. Um, you can also use very weak connections over the internet, access the system, and it feels like you're at home. So let's have a little closer look into the details. Uh, the BPM platform. Um, the platform encourages an organization-wide engagement with state-of-the-art user experience. Well, nice words. What does it mean? Uh, let me fire up my uh, browser on the system and have a closer look. Now, I will use a server that is also available from the internet. Uh, so I work with that server usually over um, weak lines over the internet when I'm uh, away from the office, so uh, it, it works just fine. Uh, the interface is now split up into different sections, as you can see here on the left-hand side. We have a dashboard section, a model, reporting, configuration, and administration. Now, the dashboard is what you uh, see right here. I can uh, use different styles of a dashboard. Now, what is a dashboard? Our uh, system allows uh, to bring all the most important information just to one page. So, if I'm a manager that is working in the customer service, I can fire up my dashboard. I can see um, the performance indicator that is most important to me. I can drill down into the single uh, indicator tree, um, have that um, a little more down here. I have my to-do list, uh, an object list of all the processes that are most important for me. Uh, you can uh, get in other uh, websites from your intranet or so. A dashboard is basically um, um, a tool that brings uh, different things in one overview. And as you can see, I can change my layout. Uh, if I want to make that smaller, then a little wider, 
uh, whatever. So the layout is also flexible uh, to the designers of those dashboards. Okay, so uh, the user experience is very uh, nice. It's easy to, to understand how things work. Uh, you can collaborate with others from your browsers or mobile devices. Um, so wh what does that mean? Let me fire up another dashboard. You see here I have several performance indicators side by side, one chart that brings it all together. Now what happens if I go away from my um, browser as it was before and uh, bring it a little more into something that would be more like a mobile phone that is more narrow and then you can see uh, the website changes directly and you can scroll it down here now. Um, it is no longer side by side. So we have a responsive design of our web uh, page so you can use it on mobile devices uh, easily like uh, tablets or even uh, smartphones. Um, from browsers or mobile devices, you can also capture BPMN models and business information. Now, how does that work? Let me switch to the model section here. Um, if you're a Process Central user already, you know this look here. So there are several folders and subfolders with objects and object types. And down here, we have the document management section. Now, if I would like to create a new diagram, um, I have some diagrams here in that folder and now I want to create a new BPMN diagram that I want to design here. I can go on the plus and now I'm presented with all the objects that I can uh, create in that context of this folder here. So I can create a subfolder, I can add an external file like Word or document or PDF or something. Um, I can add a BPMN diagram which we'll do in a second. A web address, that's also a nice new feature. You can create a web address one time and provide it as an object. Now, if you reuse that object in different other documents, um, diagrams, and the target address is changed, you can only change it on this object uh, that is a central object, and the new address is valid anywhere in the system instantly. A performance indicator can be placed, as I said before, on a folder level, on a process, on a document, wherever you want, same with charts, uh, table and shortcuts where you can, instead of copy one process into another folder, you can use a shortcut uh, to uh, point to it. Okay, BPMN diagram. I would like to create a new diagram, so I create a demo one and uh, I could also import an existing diagram. So if you have uh, exports from other systems, from other vendors that can save their document into a .bpmn file, uh, we can instantly read it in and uh, work on it in our graphics. Um, the numbering, you might have uh, seen that we are able to give custom numbers. So if you import another model that had already a version somewhere else, you can switch to it. And um, iGraphics uh, made a change in the possibility of uh, numbering of documents. We can still have our single numbers or um, two digits or three digits. So I could also have a 1.3.8. Okay, I created my new object, so here you can see that's my not approved uh, uh, document that uh, I'm the owner of. I have uh, the version ID 1 and now I clicked on the document to open it. Right now it's completely empty and I would like to uh, add a new swim lane. So on the left, uh, right hand side we have all the uh, core um, 
shapes. Uh, I can view all shapes that BPMN provides or only the gateways, so uh, flexible here. I would like to drag and drop my lane in here. Uh, I can make it a little taller and uh, now I would like to start with a start event. Type start, OK. And if I want to create a new activity, I just need to click on the green dots. So in whatever direction I want to go, uh, it creates a new activity. So if I need something uh, else again, I can do that with drag and drop and one click on the green button and it's already connected. As you can see, uh, also the BPMN web diagram is uh, automatically uh, using uh, the BPMN rule. So as soon as uh, this uh, event gets an incoming line and no outgoing, it's an end event and therefore has to have a thick border line. Okay, writing in, uh, in the shapes, uh, easy to just uh, click on them and uh, type your text. Uh, I can manage text here with doing italic or bold or creating a link uh, to a part of the text. I can use the complete text or just part of it. So uh, if you have more text, um, click for Word, for example, and I create a link here and want to find a word document here. Okay, uh, you can see now uh, step three and click for word. I created a link here. So any text, even just part of text can be uh, links in a web diagram. Okay, so I created some uh, shapes here. What about uh, other BPMN rules? So if I want to uh, continue in that diagram, let me just create one other activity and then maybe you see it's an intermediate now and I would like to use a gateway. As soon as I place the gateway you can see a little uh, I can hear a pierce that tells me, oh, caution, something's not wrong here. So if I click on it, it tells me this gateway requires an outgoing sequence flow for each of its decision cases. As this one is defined as a yes-no right now, I need one for the yes and another one for the no path. And now my, um, my icon has gone away because now I'm again within the rules of BPMN. Now, let me um, do something that wasn't uh, possible in, uh, in our old BPMN diagrams. Um, I can drag and drop a lane wherever I want. So you can have uh, other lanes here side by side or pools in that case. And uh, for example, one is from customer and the other one is supplier. And this is our own company. Okay, if you wonder what, what this is here, um, as soon as I type some text, it tells me, hey, in the database here on the left-hand side, you have already some text uh, that is uh, equivalent to this one. And I could say, oh yeah, that's company banking here, or that's intercompany, or let me search for globe, global. Okay, and it tells me, hey, there is one global corporation and I can just click on it and now I made the relationship. Uh, the same thing if, uh, if you want to, to do that in a different um, possibility. Let me show you something. Let me widen that a little. 
And now I want to say that this activity is done by the customer service and all above here is done by, um, let's take a specific job. Um, let me go in the resource model into the customer service. I said down here, I just use the group customer service. So I drag and drop it in here. And now here, I would like to use the marketing, marketing management, marketing manager. So one job that is somewhere else in my hierarchy. Uh, does that work? Uh, it didn't work in uh, our iGraphics 2015 release, but here I can place an object from the resource model anywhere on a lane uh, as you want. So we no longer have all the hierarchy of the groups and subgroups in front of it. It's a direct one-to-one -one relationship and it doesn't matter um, where it sits. Okay, so this is some kind of relationship we can create now very easily here. Um, even if you have something else, like uh, some customers wanted to uh, to have something like it, another uh, sublane here. Um, this is not what I wanted to do. I wanted one here. Okay. So, and I would like to see a tool here, an IT system. So I can go to IT architecture, systems, business applications. I say we use a benchmarking portal here. I can drag a technical resource. So you have here a group, here um, a job, and here an IT application that is supporting something. Okay, so very easy to do now. And uh, yeah, I created my BPMN diagram, and as soon as I drag and drop some of the stuff down here, okay, and maybe this one here, um, you can easily adjust all that uh, in the web. Okay, um, I think that's uh, fine now with uh, the BPMN diagrams. Uh, of course, other things uh, work here. So if I want to create a shape down here, uh, you can see it switches to an, a communication line because no sequence flow is possible to other pools. Or if I go just on the edge, it just connects uh, the complete pool with it. So all those things are possible easily right here. Good. So that's um, collaboration from uh, browsers, mobile devices, um, and work together with us uh, on the system. And maybe just one last point. I put my mouse from my PC to the side, and what I'm now doing is working on my touch screen. And as you can see, when I go with my finger on shapes, I can select it, I can drag and drop it with, uh, with my finger. If I uh, zoom in, I can use the uh, gestures that you do with, uh, uh, with two fingers to zoom in, zoom out, uh, drag the diagram around, um, even creating some new uh, shapes out here, clicking on that, dragging it. So it all works also on, uh, on a touch screen. And if I want to write some text here, I would need to use my, um, my um, virtual keyboard on the screen uh, to do that. So that would also not be a problem. I just have to switch it on here for Windows. And oops, in here. And do it like that. Okay, so um, back to the slides here. Access Streamlight dashboards for role relevant focus on business information. Now, that is what I started with, the uh, dashboards here uh, that can show you all the things that are important to your role. Um, how does it work and where does it come from? Now, let me go back uh, to the tree view here. Where I just And you see, dashboards is 
one possibility to uh, create uh, from an object. So if I want a new dashboard in here, I just create it, create this object, and if I go to the dashboard, it's empty now, and I can start adding gadgets. A gadget can be a chart, a table, a to-do list, an iframe that is showing external web pages in the iGraphic site, uh, just text, a performance tree, or any custom object list. So let me start with my to-do list. So here with the to-do, I can see items I have to review, items I have to approve, and so on. If I want another gadget here, for example, a chart, let me configure it. I choose a chart and uh, let me just drill down into, I know it's called customer service. Okay, customer service cost or, um, oh no, it was not service, it was satisfaction. Here we go, customer satisfaction overview. I would like to have that chart. Uh, and it brings it up here. So if I want to make that a little wider or smaller, let me first save the changes. Uh, I can do it right here in the dashboard. I would like to have it that wide or a little uh, smaller here. So it's very configurable. You can drag down, rearrange all that stuff here until you are satisfied with your personal dashboard or a dashboard that's uh, valid for a whole uh, department uh, that everyone uh, can go on. So these dashboards are brand new to iGraphics and uh, I think it's a, a great possibility to have that as a start page to see right away where are we today, what is my to-do, uh, have a list of the most important uh, uh, processes uh, all at one place. Okay. Expand employee participation and web-based document control. Well, we have all the document management in iGraphics. That was also with iGraphics POC Central. But if somebody wanted to upload a new document into the database, uh, the person needed an iGraphics client. So now we can do it directly from the web. If I want to add some more documents here, uh, just click the plus, add an external file, choose file, uh, give it a number or a custom one, uh, give some text to it, and then upload it. And um, then we have the documents in here. So it can be done right with the browser uh, on the web page. Okay, the user experience. Um, it's a single point of access. I think you already learned that by now. Uh, the web browser is uh, the center uh, piece of access uh, to the system. It's very easy to use. Uh, you can browse around, navigate through the documents, diagrams, and so on. Um, see performance indicators. So. Uh, that's uh, very, very nice. Uh, smart filter. If you don't want to see several things, you can filter out information. Um, we have smart filters on a lot of uh, um, uh, things here. For example, <clears throat> if I go to my, uh, excuse me, to my resource, where am I? Employees. Stefan Hessenbruch, and uh, I can now see all my assignments that I have uh, in one spot. So I can see the goals I am accountable for, the processes, a performance indicator that I'm consulted about, about and so on. Um, if I want to have some filters on that, so I don't want to see any goals or any other jobs, I can filter it. Uh, I only want to see goals and, and uh, jobs I'm connected to. I can see that uh, directly here. So or all the processes but no goals. 
um, it shows me uh, only the processes. So you can filter the information that you are interested in uh, very easily. Also in uh, the dashboards uh, that I created here, <clears throat> uh, if I want to see in that uh, dashboard uh, only Asia Pacific and US and not EMEA, I can just uh, click on it to filter it away uh, to only see uh, the stuff that is really of interest right now. Okay. Uh, the web modeling, I already showed you that, uh, how easy it is to create rapidly a new diagram uh, in the web interface. Now, um, people might want to know, hey, what about the flowchart applications, process, process for Six Sigma and so on, uh, where is it gone? Well, it's still there. You can still use um, the good old um, application. Uh, to access uh, the information in the database. So if I go and um, refresh my window, you can see here the demo dashboard that I just created. Um, <clears throat> you can see in here uh, the uh, other documents like here the um, demo BPMN diagram that I created and I can still work with all my other documents. Uh, that are here. Uh, there are some functionalities that are not easily transferred into the web. So, for example, uh, the iGraphics process simulation. Uh, it's not uh, possible to do it in the web as of today, uh, so we still need uh, the client for these special tasks. Um, some of the functionality that we had in the client are in the web now. So, for example, as you can see here, the dashboards, the client can't handle dashboards. So, if I go on that uh, right mouse click, it tells me you can show it in the web browser. Or also, if I want to go to the uh, rights management of the repository, if I click on manage rights, it brings me to the rights section uh, in the database where I can give uh, the permissions to other people. Okay, so client is still available and still useful. Manage cycles, approve versions, um, versioning of documents, it's also possible to do that in the web today. Now, if I go on a document like uh, my uh, demo, BPMN diagram that you can see here. Let me check it in as it is right now. Okay, and now I think I would like to uh, to run an approval cycle for it. Uh, I can go to manage cycles. So you can see all the uh, the properties that have been in iGraphics in the client in in Windows boxes. It's now available here on different tabs uh, of this system. So approval cycle, I can start a new approval cycle and it shows me uh, which persons need to approve now. So the approval group uh, can also be defined in here uh, to bring in people that need uh, to approve um, a document. So let me cancel that and maybe change the approval group to a custom approval group, create cycle group, and if I want to add a new user, uh, you can see you directly have uh, access to a lot of the users of the um, uh, iGraphic system, and this is also Active Directory users and also Active Directory um, uh, no, uh, no groups at that point, but uh, all the Active Directory, all local users uh, can direct, uh, directly uh, be used. And if I want to add a subgroup, it's as easy as this. Uh, create the uh, definitions on the subgroup uh, um, can all be done in the web client. Okay, so um, that works. The people are always informed via email that they have to do something and uh, 
you can see it in your own task list. So it's easy to access here, my to-do list. Um, and you can see, oh, now I'm in a repository in that EMEA repository. I have a lot of items to review and some items to, uh, or one item to approve. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, so far about the uh, cycles. So it's all possible from the web. Uh, CAPTCHA, um, enterprise objects and relationships. Now, as you know, if you used iGraphics more extensive than just for document management and diagram creation, then you have been a user that was making use of the object-oriented modeling possibilities where we can uh, model all the enterprise objects. Uh, like processes, for example. Now, if I go on the process here, on a process object, you can see on the first tab the most important information, summary and purpose of the process, what other processes it contains, risks, and if available, also performance indicators. If I go to the described by section, you can see that this process object is described by a diagram, and not only one diagram, we have two different things that are describing this object. Here it's the whole diagram, and in this one it's only one shape that is describing this process. So we can have one process object that might be described by different diagrams or other objects. On the section for the relationships, you can see all the complex relationships that this process object has. For example, who is responsible in here to do the work, who is accountable, who is consulted and informed, what systems are supporting that process, and other outgoing relationships like uh, strategies, connect, strategies connected to it goals, what requirements are important in here, um, are there other documents that describe that process or uh, the document the process and the workflow, um, work products flow of this uh, object. And this is true for every single object. You can see a lot of relationships in here. Now, let me create a brand new object, a process object here. And um, let me go on it. Relationships. Right now, all is empty. How can I do um, a relationship? Well, first of all, you can click on Add. And now I would like to search for customer. And customer service is responsible for my demo process. I can choose it. If I want to define an accountable person, I can go on Add again, and now I know who it is, but I don't know his job uh, title. So I can also go in here and just search for uh, some characters, and it shows you all the persons. Just click, then you see this person is connected to that job, and I can pick both, and it's connected. So that's one possibility to make relationships in here. Another one that might be um, even easier than the one I just showed you is um, I can do something like this here. Let me first search for some uh, business applications. Um, for example, the performance measurement system is needed here. It's supporting my demo process. And here I can see it in the resource section for the IT architecture. And I can just drag and drop it in here. So easy as this. So who is uh, consulted here? Let me find in, uh, in my structure the COO can be consulted, drag and drop, and maybe in the finance area, the CFO needs to be informed. I just drag and drop it uh, in here. So very easy 
to use and uh, yeah, you can do things faster and again all in the web browser. Create and navigate BPM and diagrams with these. Um, I've already showed that uh, quick draw features, how does it work, reusable links and so on. So uh, a lot of new stuff was uh, uh, introduced with iGraphics Origins uh, to BPM and, and what we can do in here. Okay, um, analysis, custom properties. It was a little difficult to create custom properties. Oh, well, it was not too difficult, but uh, we weren't able to search for them. And now we brought that fine feature in here. So what does it mean, custom property? For example, a company wants to have um, more properties than the ones that we uh, see here in the standards tabs. And um, I created a custom property in the section of custom properties and I called it process majority and a selection list. As you can see here, I defined for process majority different levels that are available and I limited the availability of that property to these types. I can only use it on process objects and on um, SAP process objects. I have another custom property that I defined cl as classified or that I said it, the name is classified and the property can be true or false and I made that available to diagrams, external documents, documents and BPMN diagrams. Now, this is the central administration of all the custom properties you want to make available to your people. Now, if I go back on the model and go on item properties, you can see that I can uh, define for my processes uh, what majority level they have. So, for example, if I go on my uh, just created demo one, and I want to make a change here. It's a level one process um, right now. Uh, I can just make that change in here. And uh, the classified is not here, but if I have, for example, a document down here, um, let me take that uh, Word document I have here. Um, you can uh, see uh, the, the, the classified section here and uh, yeah for let me um, let me do it for this one here I can easily check it out and then uh, go in here and make a change so is that document is it um, classified true or is it false uh, it's easy like that okay so this is what we uh, can do here on uh, documents with uh, the um, custom properties. Enhanced resource uh, what-if modeling. So you acquire by role capability or automatic uh, allocations, uh, RACI, hierarchy, and so on for a simulation. So. Um, because of the change in the resource modeling, we also have some more possibilities uh, in iGraphic simulation, but I will not uh, dig down now uh, into that in deep. Oops, too fast. Uh, better represent your resource structure and dependencies. Uh, you've also seen that the resource model is now um, more extensive than it was before and I can work on single objects um, as I want. I don't have to check out the whole resource model. Uh, I can work on uh, the CLO and make some new relationships here while another colleague is working on the COO is changing some of, of the settings there. So, and uh, yeah, we have now um, jobs, sport, legal entities, person, and if you want uh, way more because it can be 
um, modeled or configured here in the administration section that for the labor you have a person for IT architecture you want to have subgroups for hardware and software and yeah I can uh, add uh, other subtypes if I want and uh, so the resource modeling uh, has gone way more um, flexible than it was before. Okay, extract more knowledge about your business and uh, what I've showed you was now um, how you can model that uh, things in iGraphic. So we used uh, in that case our uh, little um, example process to make some relationships. Now, if I go on uh, the relationships for that process object, uh, you can see it all in here. Um, let me go back to my functional processes, my demo one. You can see it um, all here. Now, if you are more the business analyst or controller or you are somewhere in the middle or top level management, um, you don't want to see the details for every single process and run through that to learn uh, how it is uh, set up here and there. Uh, you might want to have a more global analysis of all the dependencies and uh, this is exactly what we can do in the reporting section here. Uh, the reporting section allows us to create and define reports that are available to the users. Who has the right and the license to create new reports? can do it here with the templates. I can, for example, create a generic list and use an iGraphics uh, language uh, to design my report. iGraphics is supporting you. So, for example, let me start from scratch. You can see what, what you can report on. Uh, it brings you all the possibilities. If I know the syntax, I can also uh, just uh, type it in. So I want to use a filter for types equals um, activity or type equals object type and let me search for the process. Oh, that was SAP. I just wanted standard processes. Okay, and for activities or processes, I would like to see who is responsible for, accountable, oops, yeah, I don't want to see what the process is responsible for, but I want to see who is responsible for the process. So now it's right. And consulted and informed and supported by okay so all this uh, is possible to just type it in to design that report and then I can run the report to see what the result is and now I have a list of all my processes and activities with uh, all the uh, data fields with the properties I've set in here. So it's very easy to design a new report with that and if the report is fine and useful for others I can save it uh, here and uh, give it a name and then it will show up in the saved reports. The saved reports can be clicked by users with uh, um, the uh, license and the right to see the reports. Of course, this can all be um, limited uh, so that not everyone can see uh, all of it. So here I created a report, for example, that shows me all processes that have a process majority defined. And as you can see here, we just created the majority for my demo process. It's right here in the list. So every report is freshly created when somebody uh, clicks on it. 
what was modified in the last two days. Uh, show me that. And you can see everything in the whole database that was modified in the last uh, two days. Another example. Show me all processes uh, that have goals connected to it. And up here you can see the company goals and here all the processes and you can see the relationships between goals and processes. So that's a matrix report. And let me go back. One last report as an example, a risk map for only uh, certain processes. So I limited it to all the processes um, in customer service. So all the three dot processes are listed here. And you can see the risk map with the red, uh, yellow, and green areas where we have uh, yeah, in the red area, the processes, you should watch first how you can limit the risks there. Okay, so uh, the reporting section helps you a lot and again, it's always accessible in the uh, web interface and with that, you can also see uh, the reports on a smartphone like we see here on the screenshot or a tablet or wherever you need it. Okay, uh, track performance, I think it's clear, understand. Business metrics, I've showed that with uh, the performance indicators already. The web-based reporting, I just ran through that. Uh, multiple reporting formats, report on indirect impacts and you can report on gaps, uh, custom objects, uh, what wasn't possible in the old iGraphics Process Central system and uh, shape properties, you can now report on this kind. Yeah, monitor performance, uh, measure what's important and in context performance modeling, what does it mean? Uh, I've already showed you the dashboards and dashboard possibilities. Uh, where did it come from? I modeled some performance indicators um, for my process measure my customer measure customer satisfaction. Uh, process is looking like that, very easy and nice. And the process has some measurements in here where I can see the um, the overview directly in here. Now, where's that data coming from? Uh, single performance indicators were defined here and they all have a chart connected to it. And that chart automatically refreshes when some of the source data changes. No matter where the source data is, if you have it directly in the iGraphics database, manually entered, or if the data is coming from any other external system, from an SAP system, from an Oracle database, wherever your data is, we can access it and show it here in a chart. And my performance indicators were summarized in one chart, as you can see here. And of course, I can uh, filter data in and out here, um, make modifications to it. So this is where the uh, data and the performance indicators are created, and I can use that uh, anywhere uh, I want on the web page, on my mobile phone, and so on. Now, what's in-context performance modeling? Um, I will show you an example here. Here we have some um, diagrams, and in that diagrams, I created um, a shape here that is, co oops, uh, that is connected to a performance, uh, actually to two performance indicators. And the performance indicators are somewhere in the system, uh, but I show uh, the current um, values of the performance indicators directly in the diagram. And it's also coded with the colors. So if we have set um, uh, limits for the uh, performance indicators, um, then I can see this here is in the yellow area, this here is in the green area. 
and it's also always refreshed as soon as the data of the performance indicators changes. Um, I can see it right here. Yeah, value model, uh, model smarter and faster by changing references in a single place. I think that is already known to you. If I change a job uh, description, for example, in the uh, tree view, uh, wherever the object was used, it is changed automatically. And keep track of change versions uh, to meet compliance requirements. Um, of course, we have the history of the documents directly um, in the web interface, so no matter on uh, what uh, document you go on, you can see the, um, the old versions, you can view the old versions uh, for the managed cycle processes. We always have the, um, the cycle uh, track, so the audit trail is directly in there too. Okay, versioning, show that. Uh, diagram versioning. Yeah, flexible deployment and administration. So let's go away from how we model and what we can do with the model. Let's have a look on the administration part. Uh, we always had a high impact on the IT department because whenever a new user needed to be created uh, so that somebody else can have access to uh, the client to access the database and start modeling. Um, it's all gone. It's now directly possible to do that in the web client. So if I go to the administration section and user management, of course uh, you need to have the right to do that. Uh, I'm an administrator of that system so I can see all the people that we have in here I can go on the groups, uh, have a look to that. I can uh, see um, directories that are connected. And here is a very nice new thing. Um, add new directory. Uh, Process Central was only possible to work with Active Directory. And now we can have Open LDAP, NetIQ, or any other kind of LDAP service that we can access. Um, define what users uh, to filter out there um, and uh, yeah, bring it in our uh, database. So even if you have multiple domains, we can easily bring it into one system. Uh, if we want to have local groups, I can easily create a new uh, local group here. Just create a group. Okay, and uh, then I can add people uh, to that group and, for example, the two Adams that we have and Alex here, uh, confirm selection, and uh, now I created a new group uh, that I can um, use uh, in, in my system. Okay. Um, Um, yeah, simple and scalable deployment. Um, how is it deployed? It it's, can run on an Apache Tomcat, on an Oracle WebLogic, Glassfish, uh, so a lot of possibilities. It's a new technology here. On a Windows server, for example, we would uh, uh, use a pre-deployed Tomcat installation and uh, the deployment is uh, very easy, nicely done. From the IT department, we only need one technical user to the database, that's it. And when it's deployed, all the rest can done from the web. Robust security, all the security features are in the web client. So we have uh, security roles for the server where you can define who can use the application, who can delete a repository, manage password policies, so a lot of rights can be set here. On the repository roles, we can define who can edit performance indicators, who can manage a repository, and on item roles, some examples, 
who can modify a document, who can create a new one, and so on. So several roles designed uh, that we can then use on the server and the repositories of the server. So user management got way easier than it was before. Also licensing. Uh, we always had questions, I don't know how many people in my company are using iGraphics and, and where the licenses are. Uh, you can see that now um, instantly because we have the list of groups and users uh, right here. So who has access uh, to which of the licenses and license extensions. So it's very easy uh, to manage all that uh, in here. Okay, so how is it done? If I want to have a new user, let me use our good old Adam again, and he's a user, and he is a business architect. I just check that, assign extensions, and that's it. And now he can start working uh, with the system uh, with these licenses. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, I think I'm through to uh, the most important things uh, I wanted to show you today. A lot of new stuff. Uh, there is way more in the details, uh, but uh, when you start working with a new version, I think you will find out a lot of uh, improvements where we made your life way easier when it comes to modeling and analyzing your processes. I guess we have some uh, questions in the window, so Linda, would you help me to go through them? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Stefan, first. So um, one question is more swim lanes and using resources in it and vice versa. Uh, so the question refers to the very beginning of the webinar. Um, could you just say, Stefan, a few words on swim lanes and resources in it? Yeah, I think that uh, that um, handles the thing I, I showed with my um, demo diagram. Um, let me go back to it and find it. Oh, I was here. So I just dragged and dropped uh, resources from anywhere in the resource model and connected it uh, to the lanes. I think uh, the question came before I showed that, so actually I showed that it works very easily and can be done. Okay, thank you. So another question is, why do we still need the FAT client? What does not work with a web client? Yeah, as I said, um, things like process simulation. Um, you can do or you have so many uh, possibilities if I go in the FAT client and just uh, let me just create a new document. I'm sorry that this one is in German language now. Um, uh, so for example working with attributes, uh, working with uh, um, transaction scenario attributes, all that very, very detailed stuff that we can work here with, um, with uh, functions, um, statistical functions for simulation, that is uh, not possible in the, um, in the web client. Um, right now it's the first version of iGraphics Origins. We brought BPMN diagrams into the web. Uh, we do not yet have other type of diagrams here, so like value stream maps or, um, or uh, basic diagrams, it's not yet in the web client. Uh, this is still be done in the, um, in the FAT client. Okay, thank you, Stefan. So we already exceeded a few minutes, and um, I want to thank everybody for staying with us. And thank you, uh, Stefan, for this revealing presentation, and we hope to meet you in our next webinar. 
Yeah, and uh, if there are no further questions, um, I would suggest to um, stop the webinar right now and wish you a great day. So thank you and bye-bye. Thank you too. Bye.